Each year when we start to talk about quantum mechanics, one of the concepts that we often have to talk about would be the wave-particle duality of nature. Well, it's pretty easy for students to visualize electrons as being little particles with a little negative sign on them. Uh, they've grown up with that idea. And then along comes maybe the transition from physical science to chemistry, where we say actually electrons have both particle and wave-like behavior. Well, the idea of waves, there are a number of different ways to show it. What can be nice, though, is if you can create a wave, a standing wave, as it's called, in your classroom, and that frees up your hands to be able to talk about it. What we have here is a demonstration sold by Flynn uh, called the standing wave demonstration. It consists of a demonstration spinner here, and we have a bottle cap here that has a hole melted inside that fits over the spinner. On the side, we have a fishing swivel and then we have a long shoelace connected to another swivel. And so you can see one swivel on one end and another swivel on the other end. At the top, from PVC goes up here, and then right here, what you see would be a cup hook. And so what we're going to do is we're going to reconnect and we put this up here and we start the spinning. The spinner is not... And what we see the standing wave. We see that we have nodes and we have the anti-nodes. We could, if we want, we could measure the wavelength. We could talk about frequency. We can also vary the tension and see how that affects the properties of the wave. What I like about this is it's something that you could have going in your classroom when the students walk in on the day when we're teaching quantum mechanics and again, it's one of those, wait a minute, what is that and why is that going in your room? It's a nice way to introduce the concept of uh, the wave as well as particle duality of nature. So a nice standing wave type of demonstration. Well, as we, a lab assistant and I came up with this idea, uh, sent it off to Flynn and uh, it led to uh, Dave Larson and some other folks at Flynn coming up with this idea. Uh, in terms of the final kit, our version consists of very similar. You see here they used a shoelace, much more visual. Here we used a cotton string sold at a large hardware store. And same idea for everything here, but there's one, so there's that, okay. One thing that my lab assistant wanted to do, he said, hey, have you thought about trying to do uh, a demonstration where you burn the string? And at the time, I remember saying, absolutely not. We will not burn the string while it is spinning at a high rate of speed. That cannot be safe. Well, got to thinking about it a little bit, and we made some modifications. One of the modifications that you'll see would be up here, and I'll bring this down. You see, it's no longer a cup hook. It's got this safety latch. Its job is to make sure that that fishing swivel stays right there. That's an important thing, as you might imagine. Put that here. The other thing We've got this, and since we're going to be working with alcohol, as we played around with this, one of the things that we thought about would be the fact that alcohol, if it's greater than 
greater than 50% purity, it will light on fire. But what we didn't want to have happen would be for the string itself to catch on fire. That would be rather dangerous. So what we decided, let's try 70% isopropyl alcohol. And it turns out what we're going to do is we're going to soak that cotton string in the alcohol. And then we're going to hook it back up and see if it'll do what we want it to do. And that's have the alcohol burn while it's attached there so it can't go anywhere. So we've got the string fully saturated in the alcohol. And so what we'll do, we're going to take this up here, move the alcohol away, and if we can bring the lights down. And And what we see is that the alcohol burned, okay, but the cotton did not. And so the flame was hot, or the temperature was hot enough for the alcohol to burn, but we did not reach the ignition point of the cotton string. What I love about this demo is we can simply let things cool down. Now we do have to be careful, and we can cool, let it cool down, and we can light it on fire again, but we do need to be careful. Many times we teach properties of metals that they're good heat conductors, but until you really burn yourself, you may not internalize that concept. Um, so I always let this cool down for about five minutes or so before I try to do it again. Um, but uh, a fun demonstration. Um, I like to use music. Uh, there's a song from the 1980s. Uh, I believe it's from the group Dead or Alive. You spin me round, round, baby, like a record round, round. Um, it sounds much better when I don't sing, and uh, it creates a very memorable type of experience. So.